Be a real hero. Smoke your euros. Let's start with the meat. Euro meat is generally a combination of ground lamb and beef or just ground lamb. It's a mixture of onion and garlic, rosemary, marjoram, and other classic flavors. If you're just making your Euro meat in the oven, you can use any ground lamb that you might find in the store. For us, we're gonna be smoking this. And for that, we're gonna want something with a little heavier fat content. So I went and bought some lamb shoulder chops. And you can see the marbling in here. That's gonna be really good to keep the moisture content up and for flavor. I'm gonna be grinding this myself and mixing it with some ground chuck. The ground chuck that I chose is also gonna be about 25% fat content, which is gonna be really good for our product. Along with the lamb and the beef going through the grinder, I'm going to grind up our garlic and our onion just so it gets really well mixed into the meat block. Since this is a smoked product, I'm going to be adding some pink salt or speed cure as well. That way, overnight, it'll help set the meat a little better, distribute those flavors, and help us avoid any food safety issues. First thing I need to do with our lamb is remove the bones, and then we're gonna be ready for the grinder. I'm gonna grind it all together, and we'll be right back to add our seasonings. We started with a 3 8 inch plate, and then we moved to a 3 16 inch plate. That gave us a grind that's gonna work really well for our protein extraction once we start mixing. We have a seasoning blend here of marjoram, cracked rosemary, and whole oregano, and that's gonna give us that classic herbal Euro meat flavor that we're looking for. We also have four teaspoons each of kosher salt and black pepper, and we have one quarter ounce of speed cure that is going to match our five and a half pound batch of meat perfectly. I'm gonna mix in our seasonings here, Dump those right in. And then for the speed cure, I'm gonna dissolve it in about a half a cup of water here. That's gonna help with disbursement throughout the meat block. And we're gonna wanna mix as we pour that in. And now we're ready to start mixing. So this recipe, in terms of the process, is very similar to sausage making or even a venison bacon type process. We are looking for protein extraction here, and protein extraction is going to bind the fat and the protein together so that they don't separate and we don't lose moisture during the smoking process. So we're just gonna mix this with our hands, and that's gonna distribute the seasoning. That onion, you can smell it beautifully right now as well as the garlic that we ground right with our lamb. And we're looking for a really strong tackiness. The meat is gonna get gummy, it's gonna stick to your hand when you lift it away. That's when we'll know that the protein extraction has taken hold and we're ready to go into our mold. There we are. So we're getting close. We wanna go a little bit longer because we want that to be very, very tacky when we lift away. All right, I think we're there. So we'll take a little bit and that is sticking really well to our hand. So that protein extraction has taken hold and we're ready to get this into the mold. So we're gonna line this aluminum tray with some plastic wrap. And this is for two reasons. This is gonna help the meat not stick to the aluminum as it sits overnight. And then tomorrow in the morning, it'll be really easy to take out. Also, it'll create a barrier between the meat and the aluminum so we don't have any food reactions with the metal. Realistically, the meat won't be in here long enough to have too much of a reaction with the aluminum, but better safe than sorry. All right, so we're gonna take the meat and we're gonna start in the center of the pan. And we're gonna push down out toward the walls. We're gonna try and eliminate as many of those air pockets as we can, and this will help us do that. I packed our meat block into the mold really well, and then I placed another piece of plastic wrap on top. That's gonna prevent any drying out of the meat on the surface or any oxidation that we don't want either. And now I'm gonna set this in the fridge overnight. Two reasons. First being the cure. It's gonna allow the cure to set on the meat overnight. 
Number two, it's gonna allow our herbs and seasonings to develop on the meat so that once we smoke this, we're gonna have a really flavorful product. In the interest of everything smoked for this gyro, I've got some feta and we're going to cold smoke it. We're gonna set up our PK100 at a very low temperature, about 90 degrees. And we're gonna cold smoke this for about two hours to really build some good smoke flavor. I smoked this in our PK100. I set the temperature to about 100 degrees with some sawdust on it just to get those embers started and the smoke flowing. And then I turned the temperature of the smokehouse down to 60 degrees, which is just the point where I can monitor the temperature of the smokehouse. I left the door cracked for smoke to escape and so that it didn't heat up too much. Because once you go over 90 degrees and smoking cheese, that cheese is gonna start melting. It's gonna be a mess and you won't have a good final product. So we got a lot of smoke in there and I'm excited to see what this tastes like. I wrapped it in butcher paper overnight so it can settle and develop the flavors, can even out. And it looks like we got a nice little bit of smoke on the edge, you can see the yellowing. So let's see what we got. Still nice and dry, so. It definitely smells smoky, let's see what we got. Yeah, I couldn't be happier with the way that turned out. Lots of good smoke. The open sesame on top actually gives it a nice little garlicky feel too. Really happy. I think that's gonna go great on our gyro. This is gonna be ready to go on the smoker in about 20, 25 minutes. I want it to come a little bit closer to room temperature before I put it in the smoker so that we don't shock the meat. I do have our smoker, our PK100, set to 130 degrees outside so that once this comes down to temp, we can throw it right in. Before I flip our gyro meat onto the screen, I'm gonna put a little bit of topical open sesame. This has garlic, onion, and seeds that's gonna play really well with our final flavor. And then all you gotta do is pull away that plastic. Gonna add a little more open sesame to this side. All that's left to do is get a probe in here so we can monitor the temperature, and then we're gonna be ready for the smoker. We just pulled our gyro meat off of the smoker. We went with a pretty standard smoke schedule for this. I started with the 130 degree smokehouse preheated. We did that for one hour. Then I increased the temperature to 150 degrees for another hour. And then finally, I increased the temperature of the smokehouse to 180 degrees. After that, it took about four hours for this thing to fully cook and reach 155 degrees internal temperature. For gyro meat, I'm just gonna let this rest for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna slice it hot. One of the main components of a gyro is the tzatziki sauce. It's that super salty, beautiful sauce that's put on top of the gyro at the end. And I'm gonna walk you through a really simple recipe. We'll start out with the cucumber. Seed or seedless, doesn't really matter. And we're gonna go for about a half a cup of finely grated cucumber. We don't want those big chunks, but this gives a lot of flavor into our sauce. I'm gonna try to keep some of those juices because that's all flavor in there. One clove of garlic and do the same thing. We're just gonna grate that up. Take that off the back. If you like a little more garlic, you can obviously put a little bit more in there. And here I'm gonna be looking for about a tablespoon of chopped fresh dill. Fresh dill is obviously the best, but you can use dry dill if you need to. Just make sure it gets a little bit of time to sit in the fridge so that those flavors can develop and the dill can get dispersed throughout the sauce. Tablespoon in there. The base for the tzatziki sauce is going to be a plain Greek yogurt. This is a Greek sauce, so it makes sense. There are other substitutions you can use, like sour cream, if that's what you like, but I like to keep it classic with the yogurt. We're gonna be looking for about a cup total to go into our sauce. about a tablespoon of olive oil, and then we're gonna get about a tablespoon of lemon juice. We're gonna squeeze that right in. We're gonna strain it so we don't get any seeds. Gonna stir that up and see where we are.
I'm gonna use our barbecue general, which is a great SPG salt, pepper, garlic to add to our sauce. I love having this just laying around the kitchen so that when you're ready to season something and you just need the basics, it's right there for you. Looks beautiful. It's holding together really nicely. You can see the herbs in there. It's got a good amount of smoke. It smells heavenly and I'm really excited to try this. Of course, I gotta try it before we make our gyro. That's really good. It's got those classic flavors. Got a nice amount of smoke on there. Delicious, very, very tender and juicy. It's time to build our gyros. I'm gonna start with our homemade pita bread. And we're gonna take a few slices of our smoked gyro meat. A few slices of tomato. Sliced onion, nice and thin. Our smoked feta that we made. A little slice and we'll crumble that on top. I always like putting the olives on there as well. A lot of people eat them separately. I throw them right on the meat. And there we are. Beautiful smoked gyro. We have our smoked gyro meat, our smoked feta. We have our tzatziki sauce that we're gonna dip in and we have our homemade pita. All in all, it took a few hours, but it's gonna be well worth the wait. And now my favorite part. Got my gyro set up. I'm gonna give it a little drizzle of tzatziki and then we get to try it. Couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. We've got all the classic flavors of a traditional gyro, but it's kinda of got that backyard barbecue twist with the smoke and the smoked feta plays really well with the fresh pita and the tomatoes and everything like that. Absolutely delicious. You get all the standard flavors of like a traditional gyro, but it's got that backyard barbecue smoky twist, which I personally love. The smoked feta, the smoke on the meat, you still get the beautiful lamb flavor, and it turned out really, really well. So a little bit of labor of love here, but the final product is well worth the wait, and everybody's gonna be really impressed. There's a lot of meat here. I don't think the family's gonna go through it in one night. So what I'll do is I'll slice it up and I'll individually backpack it into meal-sized portions. And then you can just throw it in the freezer for up to three months or so, and then just pull them out the night that you need them. For this recipe and products that you saw in this video, head to psseasoning.com. You can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and all the other social channels as well. If you like the video, please click subscribe. And until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.